Good morning. It's a frosty October morning. I'm down here at the Argyle Town Barn. Um, I wanted to, to give you a tour of a cool old truck and give you a, tell you a story about it. Uh, I think it's a cool story. I think it's a cool truck. If you don't like it, probably we can't be friends. All right, so this truck is a 1945 International KB7 with a Coleman four-wheel drive. Um, it has over here a Frink V-plow and a wing. Seen, seen better days, you know. She's done the work. But uh, I wanted to, I wanted to tell you the story about the truck and and what's going on with it now because I think it's pretty interesting. Um. So this truck was, is a, like I said, it's a 1945. This was specced and bought by my grandfather, Lester Lufkin, when he was the town highway superintendent. And I think, judging by an old picture that I found when it was brand new, um, before the plow was even put on it, actually. I'll try to throw those pictures on later. But based on that picture, I think the town barn was still where the IGA building is in the village of Argyle. Um, so anyways, yeah, Lester bought it brand new. It served the town from 45 to, I think, 71, maybe 1970, 71. And then it was retired by my father when he was the highway superintendent. And when he retired it, um, my grandfather who had bought it, he bid on it. It went out for bid like all old trucks do. And, and Grant bought it and he took it uh, next door, so that over there was was Gramps Farm Machinery Shop, and he used he built a crane on it, a derrick he called it, and he used it to um, unload new farm machinery when it came in on semi trucks, um, in crates. You know he so so the way that worked is kind of funny. These these frames back here, doo -doo, those are. Um, they were a pivot point. They just had a bar through them. I can remember it when I was a little kid. And then it had a, a, a whole, a whole another truck frame from a different truck stripped down to just the frame. And that frame went way, way up in the air. And then there were cables that ran from this. This was added on, of course. And that gas tank is doesn't belong there. And there's a lot of things going on here that weren't the way International and Frank intended. Anyways, uh, the cables went around here. This kept them from walking off. See, people used to be more clever than they are now. And then the cables went way up in the air and they connected to the truck frame and they held it up. So then on the far top end of the truck frame, there was a pulley. And then he had sitting here, instead of all this crap, there was a big um, military winch that ran off the PTO, off that gearbox there chain drive up to run the pto or run the uh, winch so the winch cable just spooled off here and went up through midair around the pulley and then hung down in the back with a big hook on it so what he would do is back up to the truck that had the machinery on it hook the chain on the crate pick it up drive ahead and then uh you know back in where he wanted it set it down unhook lather rinse repeat so the truck was empty. Um, pretty clever, pretty clever use of equipment, you know, long before there was such a thing as OSHA. But uh, another interesting thing about, when you talk about old people being clever, this is the hydraulic tank for it that belongs there on the wing box. You can see where it's missing. And then this is the pump from the truck that used to be driven off the PTO before this was put on there, you know. And uh, the control valves over there. So the, the, the valves, the tank, and the pump were all harvested off the truck when he didn't need them anymore. And they went into the, the shop, and he had built this huge, uh, scary hydraulic press that ran off of a line shaft that he had set up. <laughs> and the line shaft drove this pump. This tank was mounted up on the wall, used those valves to run a great big eight inch cylinder probably that I have some fond memories of trying to press things together and apart and you know things flying past your head and all that fun stuff. So so the you know 
it was old timers they they didn't let anything go to waste so we've gathered all the pieces back up i've i've given it to the town highway department they're gonna they're gonna you know they're not restoring the truck by any means they're just gonna kind of clean it up get some tires on it that hold air they're gonna uh get a coat of rust-oleum paint on it so it you know, that'll make a world of difference. It'll actually look like a truck again, not just a pile of junk. Um, they're going to put the V-plow and the wing back on it, and they're going to park it out in front of the building. They're going to put the letters on the doors, Town of Argyle Highway and all that. And they're going to park it out in front of the, the town barn here, and it's going to be the sign by the road. I think it's a cool idea. It won't cost the town very much money, and it's going to be kind of a neat landmark for people driving. This is on Route 40 also, so it's, you know, there's a lot of traffic here and a lot of people are are going to see it. Um, so back to the truck. Uh, it's supposed to have duels on the rear. I'm going to go in a bit. We're going to go and see. I think I, I know a place I can get some free tires that hold air maybe from a friend of mine. So we'll see if we can get some more wheels for it and, and some tires. Uh, Mark just blew this tire appears to be holding air which is amazing considering the way it looks and the other side front one is actually holding there too so uh we'll, we'll see if we can get it so they can roll it in and out of the shop at least and then he started uh you know trying to clean it up a little bit um not 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 too much don't need it clean to bare metal or anything but he's just getting a lot of it because it was really rough um like this here uh, so he's trying to smooth it up a little bit get it clean you know you can just imagine i can just imagine back then back in the day they always had a wingman that's why the controls are way over here whenever they plowed they well i shouldn't say that i'm sure they went without sometimes but mostly they had a wingman and uh i just i just can picture two <laughs> grown men riding in this little tiny cab out plowing snow and they, they, you know, they, they had a four-wheel drive and a V-plow for a reason because back then they used to get some serious snowstorms and some serious drifting. Um, I think after the video, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I got some old pictures and I'll, I'll try to find them and throw them on the video or maybe I'll talk you through them or something because they're pretty interesting. There's one picture of this truck uh, with my father in the passenger seat when he was, I don't, I'm going to guess he was 12 maybe. And, uh, and then it's being loaded by a cable shovel, which is being operated by my grandfather. So it's kind of interesting. There's a lot of history here, a lot of history for the town of Argyle and a lot of history for my family in particular, you know, so it's, it's neat. It's pretty cool. I'm kind of excited to see, see something being done. And, you know, the truck is too far gone to, to restore it. I, I mean, I, yeah, you can restore anything, right? But it's, uh, it's pretty far gone. The frame is, you know, I don't, this frame will never see the road again. It's, it's pretty bad. So, so I think this is a good use of it. These guys will clean it up and make it presentable. And at least it can be a little something. Um, so if you love old trucks, you know, next summer, take a trip to Argyle and check out our KB set 1945 KB seven. It should be, should be cool. We were just talking. We may, uh, we may even pull her on a trailer and get her in a few parades. All right, that's it for now. I'm on my way out to uh, see if I can scrounge some free for me tires. All right, I'm out here at uh, my good friend Tim. Hello, neighbor, Salt Potato Havens. And this is Tim's museum here. That, I just wanted to point out, that's my cool truck right there. This is Tim's uh, museum. He calls it Heartland Farms. It's amazing. Um, Tim has a channel. Uh, I believe it's Tractor Tim and the Toys uh, on YouTube. You can check that out and subscribe to him too. But this is this is where he does those videos. This is Heartland Farms Museum. All of these buildings, and there's one, there's a new one, way doot doot over there. And uh, all of these buildings are full, over full actually. Uh, very over full of antique trucks tractors uh, This one here has Has toys collectibles antiques plus trucks and tractors just tons of sh stuff that he, he just loves to show off, you know, so if you're ever in the Kingsbury area on a Sunday take a stop in here uh, He's not hard to find 
and uh, just take a walk around this place. It's amazing to see. It's a terrific collection of stuff, and he loves to have visitors. Um, so what I'm here for anyways is these. These these are some, a few weeks ago, we scrapped a couple of trucks that he had that were really just just junk. One of them was a four-wheel drive. We, we harvested the transfer case, and somewhere there's axles out of it. And and we had these, ti had these tires on it, and I believe, oh, these are 1120s. They may work for what we're doing. Um, so these are, I'm, I'm just gonna grab them and, and, and hopefully we can use them on the old town truck, the old international K7 for the town of Argyle. And we'll, uh, we'll get them loaded on the trailer. Tim said I can use his skid steer. He doesn't realize that I honestly can't use his skid steer. I'm a terrible skid steer operator. I think they're kind of the spawn of the devil, to be honest. I can run almost any heavy equipment, but there's something about skid steers is not good. And just, I gotta put them on my trailer. Just remind me, do not, uh, in my terrible operation, do not destroy my wife's lawnmower. She would kill me. She loves that thing. Um, so, yeah, don't let me do that. So I told you, the skid steer is not my machine, but look at Wife's tractor, all in one piece. Tires on the trailer. Got the job done. Doesn't matter that you use the heavy equipment to stack them wrong and then manually unstack them and restack them. It's just how I roll. Okay, I couldn't find those pictures on paper, <clears throat> but I had taken a picture of the picture with my phone. So here it is. This is one of the pictures of that KB7 when it was brand new. I'm pretty sure it has the four-wheel drive in it, but it does not have the plow installed yet. So the reason this picture was taken probably is because that truck was, was brand spanking new, just backed into the garage, and probably within a week or so went to Frink to have the snow plow put on it and the wing box. Um, it look, see, the, the license plate is on the grill kind of temporarily you know that's what makes me think it's it's this that truck and that it is is waiting to get the plow installed most likely and it and it looks like a new truck you know it's shiny and it's, it's not all smashed up yet or anything so pretty sure that's that truck backed into the garage and the garage is the building that became the iga if you're a local here you'll know what i mean <clears throat> and uh so that, I believe that's that building. It's not the current town barn. It doesn't. It's not right for that. So, um, pretty sure that's it. The real puzzling thing about this photo um, that I cannot figure out is why on earth that dude closing the overhead door. He's wearing a white shirt and he has a black shirt or something over his head. Strange. Um, probably he's camera shy. Uh, so that's that one, and then there's this other picture. This one is interesting. Um, that's the truck working. Uh, I don't know who the driver is. If anybody local here recognizes him, let me know. Um, it looks like a Brennan, but I don't know that. I don't know. Even, I don't even know for sure who worked for Grandpa back then. Anyways, this guy... The passenger is, I think, is either my dad or my uncle. It's too blurry to tell. It could be just somebody riding with this driver. It might be his kid or something. I don't know. But my guess would be that's my dad or my uncle Dave, most likely. Um, and then it's being loaded by a cable shovel uh, that's being operated, I think, by my grandfather, Lester. So that's that. That's the, anyway. That's the truck. Yep. And and uh, fairly early in its life, it hasn't had the. There's a few things missing. A few lights on the roof that are on it now that aren't on it in this picture. 
So I'm guessing that this was kind of early in its life. The box is a little beat up, but I wouldn't be surprised if the box came from an old truck and got put onto this one when they bought it, you know? So that's not really a, a big surprise to me. The cab is still nice and straight. That, I believe, is a shadow on the fender, not a dent. So I think, I think that's pretty early on in the truck's career right there. They were using it to haul gravel. That gravel pit that they're drawn out of <clears throat> is... Now is a gravel pit that's near the firehouse in Argyle. Uh, at this time, it was a large hill that they were just starting to cut into. That's the very beginning of that gravel bed. And that used to be a pretty big hill right there. So that's that history lesson. Uh, I can't wait to see, you know, this truck to see, see. Hopefully we get to see something cool done with it. I think, I think we're going to. So that's that. I got the tires loaded, unloaded, no injuries, no damage, wife's lawnmower intact. Uh, I'm, I told the guys if they need anything, let me know. So if they do, I'll, I'll probably do another video of whatever that project is. And, and uh, when it's finished, I'll, I'll take one and walk you through that. I think it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool uh, lawn ornament. So that's it for that. If you like what you see, click subscribe. Bye-bye.